Hello everyone, how's it going? It's your boy Skilled Fawn, and today we're going to be doing another challenge run. This time we're going to be doing Dark Souls. And in this challenge run, we're going to be using daggers only. So, might as well segue into the rules. Uh, as I mentioned, daggers only. Uh, buffs are allowed. And I must defeat all the bosses and beat the game. Uh, with the buffs, I can use, you know, resins, magic, uh, you know, buffs, stuff like that. Uh, but pure daggers, uh, you know, except for, like, you know, Tomb of the Giants. I've got to use the lantern, but... Yeah, I'm just uh, going, selecting my character, and, you know, I'm obviously going to select the master key. Very worthwhile, if you know uh, which uh, doors it opens. But yeah, let's get straight on into this. We're going to spawn in the asylum and progress on through. We've only got the broken... Straight sword. But yeah, the good thing about this dagger in particular is it does bleed damage. And bleed is very good against uh, the demons. A Capra demon, you know, Asylum demon, Fire Sage, all those. That'll be good uh, a bit later on. But we've got regular Taurus Demon. And yeah, if you have not noticed, my damage is very lackluster. <laughs> this is the second boss in the game, and it took a decent bit of time. Though I am one-handing, uh, I mean, it kind of could make sense that uh, daggers would, you know, be one-handed, but you just lose out on a bit of damage, and uh, I mean, I was also, you know, not leveled up the most, didn't uh, upgrade my weapon, so anyways, I didn't really think about that, and I went into the gargoyle fight. And I just kept getting my butt handed to me. I just did not have the DPS to kill the first gargoyle to, or till the like second one came. I just needed to, you know, switch things up. And luckily, I had a, a viewer in the Twitch chat. He was just like, "Oh, you should probably switch it up." And yeah, it was a bit uh bit stuck on fighting gargoyles because they usually are easier than Quelag and Quelag has decent amount of health early game but I'm happy I switched it up uh, I figured I would either go here for like uh, Apra Demon and then uh, the dragon but and why not Quelag but yeah, after like an eight minute fight, we're gonna progress on through and ring the first bell. So after we ring the first bell, we're gonna head on over to Ceaseless. Yeah, Ceaseless, uh, the first time I ran to him, he just nuked me right after I got the armor of his sister. I mean, it makes sense, he's very pissed. But, uh, yeah, second time, he, I ran all the way back to a, where I picked it up, got my one humanity, and reset the fight. Down to Moonlight Butterfly. Yeah, I didn't uh, show 
like uh, some of the things, but I went to Moonlight uh, shortly after uh, Gargoyle was the first try, and even for Moonlight, I didn't even have the DPS for it. So I knew something was very, very off, and uh, I need to change something. Yeah, I'm very happy I went for Quelag. She did have a ton of health, but only her, not two bosses, makes it a lot easier. And yeah, with all those souls I acquired and all those bosses defeated, allows me to get some pretty reasonable damage. Yeah, I'm able to get a nice bleed proc and actually uh, defeat the first one pretty much before the second one can really show its face. And yeah, I mean, uh, the gargoyles can be decently tough, but, uh, you know, when there's one left, pretty simple, especially the second one, he just does a fire attack 24-7. Now we are slowly accumulating levels and humanity. We ring the second bell. And we're going to open up Sten's Fortress. So yeah, with humanity, it'll uh, help me a decent bit because the more humanity you use, the less damage you take. And like... Pretty sure Curse 2 doesn't build up as fast. Could be wrong, though. But yeah, I figured uh, once I go into Sens, I'm pretty much not going to come back. So I wanted to get a bit more levels before ONS. ONS are the bane of my existence in this game. That uh, fist only challenge I did, I fought them so many times that their moveset will forever be ingrained into my head. But yeah, with uh, the second Asylum Demon down, grab the doll. It'll be, for once we are in an Orlando, there's three bosses there. I guess technically two, but uh, Painted World, the entrance is there. But yeah, I was getting a bit destroyed by the dogs at the beginning, and Capra was not helping, but luckily got both of them. And yeah, the dog's dead corpses just flailing everywhere kind of messed me up. Uh, some points weirdly and right as I finish the fight everyone decides to rush in and yeah I'd not want to die right here tried healing up I was like okay we're just gonna quit out take the safe way and head on down into the depths I grab the large ember so I'm able to get my weapon up to plus 10 And you can get your, uh, like, uh, like a non-infusion weapon, you can get up to plus 15. Then if you infuse, you can get up to plus 5. Which I will be infusing a dagger later on for Nito. Because, yeah, those skeletons do be annoying in this fight. So yeah, the Gaping Dragon. I think he has a pretty cool design. I wish they gave him like a slightly different head or something. I don't know, it's just... The head makes him so weird.
But yeah, uh, as you can see, pretty respectable damage. Nothing too crazy, but nothing bad. Yeah, eventually I get his tail uh, cut off. Because usually what I'll just do is just, you know, flip between his head attack and his, like, running attack. Get the damage that way. But, yeah, we do get the Blight Town key, which I did not really need. Because uh, I've already been down there, but, you know, it's just more levels. And so, yeah, uh, I was... Like I said, worried about my levels for ONS, but I also was worried about my heals. Because uh, if you don't have the right of kindling, you can only go up to 10 heals unless you use humanity. So I was like, alright, let's uh, run down to Pinwheel. And make sure that I don't rest in the... Uh, like down here just because I want to teleport right after this fight to Firelink. And yeah, this is a pretty laughable boss. Though, I mean, at least Ceaseless. Uh, or, well, Ceaseless, you know, can absolutely destroy you with his damage, but Pinwheel. I mean, it doesn't die in like five hits. Or, well, I mean, depending your build, but. <laughs> Funny, uh, depending on the way you look at it, Ceaseless and Pinwheel can be. I know one can be better than the other. But yeah, uh, Iron Golem surprisingly took me like five tries. Because, uh,. Well, one, I mean, I could stagger him, but the damage I was dealing was very little, so I would have to be pressing the attack nonstop. But, um, yeah, I would get yanked off the side, stuff like that. So I was like, all right, let's just bring him over here. I'll destroy the giant above that's uh, throwing the rocks. But yeah, we're gonna head on to a Norlando now. I think in DS1, a Norlando's the like best looking place out of the the whole game. Definitely the coolest too. It's awesome that they brought it back to DS3 too. Fight uh Aldrich. Yeah, I, DS3 is still gonna be my favorite Soulsborne game. Maybe it'll be like another game that comes down the line or. I don't know, maybe I'll start falling in love with uh, another Soulsborne, but I don't know, the bosses in DS3, I don't know, can't compare with, like, most of the FromSoft games. I think that Elden Ring, as much as it's, like, copy and pasted in some areas, like, Melania and some of the boss fights in that game, they are so cool. Definitely uh, better than like the newer fights, in my opinion, or the other boss fights. Now we're just going to be strafing around, quarantine Smo, trying to get damage in. So I think that's like probably one of the worst things in a fight is when you have to have a prolonged fight where you can just die quickly. 
Yeah, another reason for me doing daggers only Dark Souls is one to prepare for soul level one. The uh, been a little bit since the fist only playthrough, so this will kinda get me back into the hang of things while uh you know having a fun challenge along the way. And yeah, who knows, maybe uh, down the line after Soul Level 1, I'll do Soul Level 1 plus 0. Yeah, probably... Uh after this challenge run, Soul Level 1, and uh, Shield Only Elden Ring, probably gonna set my sights on finishing some of my other challenge runs. Uh, but yeah, we get the Lord Vessel, very nice, able to warp to bonfires. Yeah, I do really want to complete Rune Level 1 plus 0 and uh, uh, SL1 and DS3. But, yeah, I don't know. I, Rune Level 1 plus 0 and Elden Ring. Just, uh, like I, I've done Rune Level 1 before, but R01 plus 0 on Radon especially is just pain. Like, uh... Like, I, like, I don't know, I had so much pain when I was fighting Melania over and over, but Radon over and over is just a different story. But yeah, on to one of my favorite bosses in DS1, Gwendolyn. It was the, it was always the bosses for me that, Talked and uh, like, I don't know, just like tell you a very small bit of the world, but you know, give you some answers. That's one reason why uh, DS3, I really liked um, Osiris, or yeah, Osiris, the consumed king, him and his child Ocelot. I thought their story was very. Unique. Yeah, same as Gwendolyn, you know, he just like is one of the very few bosses that actually talks in DS1. Yeah, I don't even know if any other bosses talk. I mean, Guinevere talks, but she's not really a boss. Yeah, I mean... Oh, I, oh, wait, what am I talking about? Priscilla. He talks. But yeah, you know, there's very few bosses that talk in general. It just makes it a little bit more special once they, you know, show a uh, side of them. Yeah, with uh, Norlando pretty much done, I was like, alright, let's uh, head on into the painting. And that was my mistake in my fist only was I did a uh, um Windolin first. But yeah, it was uh not good. Why does the hurry to Yeah, with, uh, this is a bit challenging just because I didn't have many heals and I was toxic. So, uh, I'm just getting my health whittled down every second. But yeah, Priscilla goes down. I was trying to get the dagger from her tail, but her tail's tiny and she was invisible, so nothing much I can really do there. 
And I'm quite happy with the dagger at now. It does a decent bit of damage, and I can get its damage up even higher. Very soon we will be heading to New Londo. But uh, first we're going to go into Seath's place. Seath was also a bit of a, a trouble in the fists only. But uh... After I took like, or once I got to ONS, you know, I put in the grind for them, and I just didn't get the victory. I took a short break, and once I came back, I I got them pretty pretty early on, and then uh, same thing for when I fought Seath. I just like fought him a few times. I think I got cursed. Uh, I was like, all right, I need to, I need to actually beat this guy. So, uh, yeah, I took a short break, and then later I beat him. The, especially in the fist only, like, uh, the way I was doing it is with, uh, the magic exploit. So, you know, scales with your intelligence, and Seath is magic resistant. Didn't work too well. But yeah, with seat down, we have uh, only three of the Lord Souls left. And to get to one of them, we need to kill Sith. Very unfortunate. By Actually, yeah, I guess I'll say this now. I have a confession. I've never played the... Uh, Artorius DLC. I know, I know. It's sad. And I do plan on playing it one day. Uh, either if I just get it for original DS1 or if I get remastered. But, I don't know, I think that would make for a, a fun video too. Uh, you know, someone that's decently experienced with the games then trying, uh, you know, Artorius for the first time in Manus. I have, you know, seen their fights, but, you know, it's a whole different thing once you fight them. As anyone knows. Sometimes you'll see someone, like, fighting a boss, you'll be like, oh, you know, it's actually really easy, man. I don't know what you're doing, and then... I don't know. Like, just crap happens. Sometimes, uh, things are not all that easy. Everyone has, you know, different experiences and backgrounds. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm quite terrible at Soulsborne games sometimes. Though I like to think myself pretty decent, can be <laughs> quite trash. But hey, it's all in the fun of the game, right? But yeah, Centipede Demon. Not a not a terribly tough boss, but uh, it's just his arena that's more so annoying. I was just uh. Covered in lava. It's like one small patch in the middle. Try not to get burned or meleeed, and yeah, I rolled a bit too early there. And I uh, luckily get his tail off. And, you know, kill his tail. Once you kill his tail, instead of getting like a weapon, you get the charred ring. So I'm able to step in the lava a bit earlier. I mean, it doesn't really, really matter, but you know, 
just in case I got yeeted into the lava by one of his attacks, I wouldn't die right away. So on to Nito. And as you can see, I have two weapons now, two daggers. The first one's the plus 10 uh, starting dagger, and then the second one is infused with uh, divine uh, art. So uh, divine helps with the undead. It will actually fully kill them once you kill them. Because uh, usually in this fight, you uh, don't have a divine weapon and you fight these skeletons and kill them, they'll just keep getting up again and again. And, you know, if you have a high damage weapon, it's not all that bad. Especially, like, one with a big attack, uh, you know, arc can hit multiple enemies. But yeah, since we're using a dagger, I've got to make do. But yeah, I'm just trying to kill the last one before I really go to town on Nito. I pretty much just rolled straight into that one, but... Yeah, not the greatest damage, but pretty respectable uh, with a buff, too. And I thought he was doing the sword attack that goes through the ground. If you don't know, if you block, it'll actually just go right up through your feet. But, uh, yeah, he's, like, two taps away. And Nito goes down. Another boss. So yeah, uh, before I went pretty much all the way up to Bed of Chaos, but I know Bed of Chaos is notorious for deaths, and I just didn't want to lose 20 humanities if I could. I figured, why not, uh, we'll go to Four Kings. I'm like, alright, and I absolutely failed to jump. But if you uh, notice there, I didn't lose any of my health when I backed out. And so once I respawned, I <laughs> spawned on the underside. Or you let out all the water. Which is uh, kind of interesting walking around this place when there's no enemies. But uh, I did hit this death barrier and lost all 21 of those humanities. So rest in peace. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, where one door closes, another one opens. So with low humanity, I was like, all right, well, let's go fight Beta Chaos. And if I do use humanity, it'll be good for four kings. But I'll save you the trouble of this fight. It's horror much as I praise some of the boss fights in Dark Souls, this is by far one of the worst. But, uh, I mean, it's more so the lore behind this boss, the important thing. It was cool in, uh, DS2, the, um, the Lost Sinner, the... It has like this bug that's crawling around and it's the same type as the one that took control of Beta Chaos. So yeah, the final boss, just a tiny bug and dies in one hit. <laughs> But yeah, we have three out of the four. Got to take down the last one. They've all been, you know, relatively simple thus far, but this is where the challenge really, really starts to come into play. I was at a, a big disadvantage at the beginning, 
you know, when I fought gargoyles, non-upgraded, non-leveled. But this is, this is probably where all the, you know, all the practice and experience in this challenge run take its roots. And yeah, I'm still somewhat, somewhat bad. So I die over and over. It's hard uh, when you don't have the best damage and uh, you know your weapon's not optimized for this boss. If only they could be bled. But yeah, I want to switch it up. Instead of going with the sorcery buff, we'll do the flame. And in honesty, it was actually the worst all because I'm doing less damage uh, but the one redeeming factor is I don't have to pull out the staff and then do that animation I think the resin is slightly quicker uh, when you perform it but you know like as you see it's not definitely not the worst damage definitely not the worst but you know it's Still really bad damage. Would like something better, but can't really get anything better. So as the the young chaps say these days, I gotta get good. And got good I did. Cause yeah, uh Four kings are annoying, but even if you, like, you know, kill the first two, they can still have four in total at the end, so. It's all just about how quick you can go. So yeah, I'm just, you know, trying to keep the pressure as much as possible. Trying to look out for moves like this. Um, and yeah, of course this one. I hate when they do this one attack. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like, uh, this is one reason why I was very happy, uh, you know, at the end to do the daggers is this is you know preparing me for SL1 hi a bit rusty yeah four kings go down that is huge big big plays and with the four kings down and all the other lord souls acquired we're gonna make our way to the final boss we're gonna place all of them within the vessel and go into the kiln of the first flame Kind of funny because while I was uh, editing this, right as this cutscene ends for like a frame or two, the doors close, but then just instantly opens. <laughs> I mean, I guess, I guess it makes sense, but no physics and things. But yeah, I got absolutely uh, destroyed that first one kind of funny too cuz like the first like I died to Gwyn in this a uh, decent bit I don't know if it's because the dagger has a different uh, parry time like iframe window but um, I was able to get the first 
parry always the jump in, but wouldn't be able to get the rest. But this uh this last attempt was the opposite. Able to get pretty much all of his just regular sword attacks. Thankfully you can just cheese him into his slow combo. And yeah, Gwyn, Lord of Cinder, goes down. And Skilled Fawn, Lord of Chaos, reigns the victor. What ending shall we do? Oh, what ending. And, I mean, with Chaos, gotta let Dark take the world. We gotta let Carf, or, sorry, two lizard guys, don't wanna butcher their names. Even though I already did. They will serve us. Frampton. I think Karth or Kath or whatever. This ending cutscene. This is very cool though. Kath and Frampt. But yeah, I uh... Love DS1, love playing Soulsborne games. If you guys enjoy watching uh, this type of content, I'd greatly appreciate uh, a like, comment, even subscribing. You mean the world to me. And, you know, expect to see more stuff in the future. I've got uh, a few things planned, like shield only for Elden Ring. Um some force unleashed speed runs i got a really good time and i haven't posted it yet on my vods i'll probably post it very soon but i got almost uh like a i, got, I almost got nine minutes on a force unleash i got like 907 which is really really good um like 30 seconds away from world record uh, but yeah, that's my goal, is to get world record on Force Unleash. I don't know how long it's going to take, and if it's even going to be worth it at the end, but one thing I wanted to do when I first, uh, you know, started doing YouTube was Force Unleash and Elden Ring stuff, so... Pretty much, you know, I'm going to do it. <laughs> Hopefully, you know, it goes somewhat swiftly and I don't have to agonize myself. But you know, I want to prove something and I think that's a pretty good way. So thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, like and subscribe, like I said, it would mean the world to me. Thank you guys for all your support, and I hope to see you guys again. Guild Fawn, out.